Welcome to Fish on Luke. Today we are going to be discussing this fish right here. It is my 100 plus pound blue catfish that I caught. Hopefully you guys enjoy this story. I've never really told it in a video, but if you do enjoy it and you do enjoy my videos and want to watch more fishing videos in the future, please hit subscribe. It would mean the world to me that this is my new channel. So any support is greatly appreciated. I figure I should probably preface this video um, and give you some information before I start telling the story to give you a full understanding of what's actually happening when this um, when this big fish came into the boat. I grew up in north central Minnesota, really no catfish. So when I moved to Grand Forks to go to college, I started getting into catfishing on the Red River for channel cats. Ended up moving to the cities, to make a long story short, started getting into flatheads, started the YouTube channel with Jacob, Peter, and Blake, and uh, we started targeting different species, alligator gar and uh, blue catfish. So that's how the whole catfishing thing started for me. Um, I love flathead fishing, but I really, really wanted to get into the blue cats. So my first ever blue cat trip was on Milford Lake uh, in Kansas. And I think the biggest fish we caught that day was right over 40 pounds, which was an impressive specimen. Um, my friend Brad caught that fish and it was... It was awesome. I caught a giant wiper. It was a crazy trip. I didn't so much enjoy the whole reservoir fishing. It was okay. It was different from what I was used to being only fishing on the river for catfish. Um, but we started uh, that trip. We actually went to the Missouri and fished the confluence in Kansas City with the uh, the Ka at Ka Point. And um, we actually got into a couple fish out there out of the boat. It's kind of a sketchy area. Um, people warned us, like, just be careful when you're down there. But we were in a boat. So it wasn't too bad, but um, we ended up coming back one other time um, at night. And um, I vividly remember the first time we were on the Missouri River. And this river is a beast. It is its own specimen. It is something, if you've never fished the Missouri River, there's nothing like that in Minnesota. Um, I remember going there with Jacob and his boat. We had never been there. And this was at night. We had never been to this stretch of the Missouri River. We've never really went out and um i remember vividly um we got all the camping stuff in the boat we is like 1 30 in the morning and we get there and um we're driving i'm looking at my gps on the phone and i'm like we're going down river right now he's like dude i'm going up river and i was like it feels like we are we were going backwards in the current it was so strong that missouri river is crazy and we had a full boat with a 35 horse, two guys, and it was completely packed to the brim with camping stuff. So that was our experience, the first time ever fished the Missouri River. Complete failure of a fishing trip, but we learned a ton. Um, we actually were given the opportunity to fish with two of our friends that trip, and that's when we actually started catching fish. Um, they taught us the ropes, the channel swings, the wing dikes, the flats, the holes, everything we needed to know and what bait to use. Um, they taught us that trip. Thankfully, we would, probably wouldn't have caught a fish without those guys, so... Much thanks to them. So the day came, or the weekend came, of my big fish. Um, we called ahead to the bait shop in St. Joe, Missouri. And um, we're like, hey, we're not going to be coming in until really late. Uh, we need some skipjack, and uh, we definitely need bait. Because we didn't have any coming from Minnesota. We needed the good bait. It was a skipjack time of year, and we needed skipjack. So we ended up... Um, getting to the bait shop, I think it was like 11, 30, 12 at night, midnight. It was crazy. And he waited for us. We got bait. I think we spent two or $300 on skipjack. We did not know what we needed. We just know we had a lot of camping stuff. And in case we needed a lot of bait, we had to get a lot of bait. Um, in the end, we didn't end up using hardly any of it, but it got us the big fish. So without them, we would not have caught that fish. Um, so we got to the boat ramp at like 1.30 in the morning, I believe. It was really, really late. And I remember the current again. I'm like, this river's crazy. Let's just get to the spot. We went to the same spot. Let's get to our spot. Let's set up camp. We know it's safe there. So we pulled in, unloaded all of our stuff in the middle of the night, turned, put the lantern on, put the filming lights up. So we had everything that we needed um, to set up camp in the middle of the night on a sandbar behind a wing dike on the Missouri River. It was awesome. It's so fun to do that. 
So we pulled up, got everything uh, everything out, got our tent set up, and um, put out some rods for a while. I think we might have put some out. We didn't. I don't think we caught any fish that night, but I think we had a pretty good one on, um, right on the sandbar. There's, the current was dead right out in front, but 20 feet out from where our uh, camp was set up, there was a really good current seam off the tip of this wing dike. So it was, it's kind of the perfect little spot if you wanted. If it's a small group, it's for like one or two tents is about all you can fit there. But um, we got a really good night's sleep. And uh, we woke up in the morning, Jacob was making breakfast, and he had rods out. And he caught like a 20-pound fish right offshore in the morning, thought it was going to be an amazing day. Um, and it ended up being an amazing day, but it took us a long time to get to that point. Um, our friends that were showing us the ropes of the river um, told us a bunch of tips on what to do for next time. So we kind of had an idea. Um, and put everything they told us and found our own spots similar to what they said um, for us to find fish. And we were trying and trying and trying. I remember, I think I called John Jameson maybe even to get some tips on how to fish these holes off the wing dikes. We didn't really know what was actually happening at that point, but we were learning as we were going. And you got to remember, I had only blue catfished like four or five times before this day. We had a really, really rough day. Um, looking on the phone... I see uh, rain coming. I'm like, crap. I could see the clouds, so I checked the radar. There's rain coming. So finished fishing this wing dike, and uh, we're like, let's go find some shelter. So um, we pulled up to this little tiny sandbar and had this big tree hanging over the whole little point on the sandbar. So we just ran my boat. We're in my boat at this time. We ran the boat up on the shore and got out with our lawn chairs because I don't have seats in my boat. It's just lawn chair seats. Um, put them out on the sandbar under the tree and just let the rain pour down. We weren't getting wet, so we were happy. Um, I think the storm went for about 20 or 30 minutes, and uh, it ended. And uh, that's where the story starts to get crazy. So the storm ends, and um, we only ended up going about a quarter mile from where we were sitting, hiding from the rain. We felt good we were dry. We're like, let's go fish this swing. Um, and we did. He, uh, we pitched out the rods. Um, I think we might have had four rods out total. Uh, two for each of us, I believe. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but when you see this clip in the video, Jacob um, is fighting the fish. He got bit. His rod went down. And he's reeling in this really nice blue cat. Um, I, I figured it was a really good one. I, I don't know. We had never really got into him super heavy on the Missouri. Um, and as he's describing this channel swing and the way the current moves from this side to this side, my rod fully folds over the back of the boat. That drag had everything it had in it, and it could not hold that fish. And I... The moment was just epic. Multiple, multiple lines. I kind of want to give everybody an idea of what we're fishing here when we're fishing for these blue cats. We're on what's called a channel swing. And I know we have these in Minnesota, but a channel swing is where the current comes from one side of the river to the next. And right when it comes to this back side of the... Oh, we got a double. We got a double. That's a bigger one. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, Jacob. We got a double. That's big. That's, That's really big. big. All right, that's a really big one, Jacob. Yep. All right. So, I grabbed the rod. I think the camera at this point is sitting on the, I think it's sitting on the center console on my boat. And um, I grabbed the rod, and I cannot stop this fish. I got the drag cinched. I think I'm running 80-pound um, braided Power Pro with 80-pound uh, fluorocarbon or a mono leader. Pretty much just for the rocks when you're fishing that structure, it's good to have a floral leader instead of a, of braid because you get one nick in a braid and it's over. So um, we could not stop this fish. Jacob ended up getting his fish in. I netted his fish, a little filming secret that nobody really knows. Um, in the video, it shows me netting. I'm holding my rod, reeling in my 100 plus pound fish, and I'm netting his fish. That's real. What isn't real is me netting it the first time I try it. Uh, he made me look like a netting pro, but I always tell people that say, dude, I can't believe you netted his fish reeling in that fish. Well, it took me a few tries. You just didn't see them. So props to Jacob and making me look like uh, the net man. But uh, 
nonetheless, it did happen. Oh, can you net that one handed? Here we go. Once it's in, I'll get it. Okay. That's like Th that's one, folks. 25, 30 pounds. Mine's way out in the current and it's heavy. Do we need to go after it? He gets his fish in, shows it to the camera. I'm still, this fish is still pulling drag. There's nothing I can do. So what we had to do, which isn't in the video, you, you, you'll see us floating. And um, we're floating with the fish. And it's because we actually tied the anchor up to it, a life jacket and chucked it in the water and started floating down river with the fish, because I couldn't stop it. There was no way I was stopping this fish with that 7,000 in that um, six and a half, seven mile an hour current. Just, it wasn't happening. Um, I maybe could have done it, it would have taken a long, long, long time, and I wasn't doing that. So, we ended up tying the rope to the life jacket, throwing it in the water, and just started floating with the fish. Luke just hooked into a jumbo, I'm pretty sure. If it ain't big, something's wrong. Oh my god. I'm moving it. <sighs> we ended up tying the rope to the life jacket, throwing it in the water, and just started floating with the fish. And this went on for 10, 15 minutes or so, and I finally got the fish to the top of the water. It surfaced, and in the video it looks like I saw it, but I actually did not see it. Jacob saw it and realized how big and how special this fish was. Unbelievable. That is a fight. When you get a big fish like this. It's important you do you want to tire them out too much uh, it's best interest for the fish's health that you, you get you chase them down oh yeah that's, that's a big that's a jumbo and it got to the boat Jacobs I should get the net so he grabs the net and I'm ranking on this rod this this rod's fully folded over the side of the boat and you got to remember this is the first video we did um, with Tomcat rods um, in our videos, I believe. This was the first one. So talk about hitting a home run, huh? But uh, we ended up getting this fish up to the boat. Jacob set the camera down, make sure it was angled right. For There's just two of us, and we had this DJI Osmo gimbal camera that was dominating. I mean, no rockers. The boat's all over, but that, that there's a gimbal on that camera which keeps it steady, which is wonderful for what we needed at this time. Um, got the fish in the net and Jacob said, the fish came or it came unhooked or something to that in that matter and I was freaking out. I thought maybe the fish was gone. And then he's like, oh, it's, it's not. And then it was in the net and I'm like, oh my gosh. Uh, he tried lifting the fish in the net. I looked at this thing, I'm like, oh my gosh. This fish is a giant. And it was, it was huge. And he could not get the fish in the boat. so. I grabbed the side of the top rims of the net, held it, you know, vertical with the fish in the net. Luckily, we had a big net, and I pulled as hard as I could. You'll see in this clip um, me trying to lift this fish in the net. It took everything I had. I was tired from this fish. Um, I'm going to get ready for the net. Oh, my God, Oh, oh it's my huge. God. It's a hundred pounder, maybe. I don't know if that can. Oh, the hook just came out. Did it? No, I don't know. Oh. Oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, buddy. Yeah. We got to get it in. Get it in. I'm I was kind of down in the dumps, and this. I, I've never seen a fish, a catfish this big, that's for sure. It's the biggest thing I've ever seen. I'm going to start the motor. I just want to get out in the current here. Yeah, you can try. Make sure you're grabbing the knot. I got it. All right, we, we cannot move this boat without getting oh. this fish in. This is just a complete giant. Uh. Oh my God, folks. Check out uh. this. Northwoods angling, boys. Uh. <laughs> oh my God. Yes! Yes! Woo! Heartbeat? Oh, it's just racing. Yeah. So it took everything I had. I lifted the fish in the boat, and when it hit the hit the floor of the boat, I could not believe how big this fish was. And I knew it was big. 
I knew it was huge. I wasn't sure how huge. I didn't get a real feel for how big this fish was until Jacob set that fish on my lap. I knew it was giant, but I did not know how special of a fish this was. And I mean, you'll see in the video when he helps hands helps helps hand me this fish. I'm trying to hold it on my legs, but my my legs are so short and stumpy that the fit my legs were like angled down when my feet were down. So I had to tiptoe with this fish on my lap, and my legs are shaking, my arms are shaking, my heart's racing, my blood pressure's probably skyrocketing. I mean, I probably could have croaked at any moment. But I got this fish in my hands, and we're taking a picture, getting a video, and uh, it was a super special moment for me in my entire life, not just in fishing. Um, for me, me and Jacob is like the big, best bonding experience probably I've ever experienced in my life. <laughs> okay. It's owning my hand. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at my comparison. It's a daddy fish and a, it's a mama and fish. A mini fish. Oh. All right, Luke, we got to get these fish back. Let's do it. Let's release them. I think we're going to call this trip a, a done deal. We're yep. going to probably pack up, yep. head home. This is what we, we needed oh. at the end. From Northwoods Angling, Luke and I, everybody, you got to get down to the Missouri River. We'll this see. is phenomenal. We'll see you next one. We'll see you on the next one. Right. Um, we got the fish um, measured, girth length and um no weight unfortunately but it, it's between 108 118 i say 118 because it sounds good and it's a giant so it's over 100 pound fish and that's what i wanted and um you don't see but at the end of the video a lot of people don't know this but there's a time when i talk about it, i really want to care about your fish but i can't or something to that matter me and jacob a big man hug no no shame at all but uh that was it. It was, uh, I don't think I'm forgetting anything. It was a super, super special moment. And uh, I'll never, ever forget it. So, as much as I want to care about your fish, it's hard to. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get a double. I'll get mine back in the water and then we'll deal with him. And I did get a replica of it. Here's a little B roll of that replica done by my friend Eric Frank one of the best in the business in the entire country. So much thanks to him for doing his first ever catfish replica. Anyways, um, hopefully you guys enjoyed that uh, blue cat story. Um, this is my new channel and I got a whole lot more to come. So please, if you did enjoy this story and you want to watch more fishing videos, I got a new jet boat. I got some big plans coming this spring and this winter. Um, so if you want to watch those, please subscribe. I'm on Instagram at fish on Luke. Um, TikTok, Fish on Luke. You can find me at Fish on Luke at anywhere. These skeleton flathead hats will be coming available soon. Some skeleton zombie flathead stickers as well. So something to look forward to. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to Storytime with Luke. And I appreciate it. And we will see you guys out in the water or uh, in the next video comments. Thank you guys so much.